It's not that the market hasn't been tapped before. Rather, the market is a slut, and it likes to be tapped a lot. The spirit of Christmas is more than just good cheer and being kind. It's hot cocoa in a shop your white sister owns. It's going on meaningless adventures all the time while shirking your responsibilities at work. It's about finding that special someone within the first 20 minutes of a film with whom you can face trivial adversities. You can pitch these guys anything you want, as long as you don't rock the boat too much. They have to produce hours upon hours of original Christmas programming. If Hallmark won't pick you up, Lifetime or Super Channel definitely will. It is both cheaper and more appealing to Middle America if you set the movie in a small town. It doesn't matter which one, you're going to be filming in Canada in the summer, so you might as well say it's Kansas in the winter. Hi, I'm William Jorgensen, and while I haven't directed a Christmas movie yet, I've watched 32 of them in the past month, and I'm here to teach you the ins and outs of the creative process so you can be ready for the 2022 season. That's right, you can have your own movie on Hallmark, Lifetime, Super Channel, or even Amazon Prime in no time. Granted, I haven't watched anything on Amazon Prime in years, but by the looks of it, they'll stream anything. While it's fun to joke about Christmas movies, many people don't understand the subtleties and art that go into them. These movies straddle a fine line that ensures their popularity. In fact, if I were to reframe this masterclass just a little bit, I could teach a politician to design a winning presidential campaign. The secret to succeeding in both of these endeavors? Appealing to middle America. If you take a look at a map, you'll see that middle America is in fact the largest part of America. It's true, I measured it. So it's absolutely vital that you appeal to their sensibilities while allowing those in other places to ruthlessly mock you. This art isn't for them. Except when it is. And so I've compiled the rules, tips, and tricks that will help you create your perfect Christmas movie. Hopefully by the end, you'll have a complete understanding of how to make films that work on these channels. The start to any Christmas movie is an idea. It doesn't have to be complex or fleshed out just yet, so it might be best to start out with the title of your movie. For this, I use artificial intelligence. I fed GPT-3 the names of all 32 films I watched this month and watched as the computer inspired me. It came up with some amazing ones, such as The Christmas Cottage, The Christmas Note, A Christmas Melody, A Christmas Arrangement, A Sister for Christmas, The Christmas Secret, and Christmas Incorporated. Now my first instinct is to go with Christmas Incorporated, but my mind immediately goes to a dark place where Christmas cheer is manufactured like that one episode of Family Guy. No redemption, no relationship, just a nasty look at the underbelly of the Christmas industrial complex, such as it is. But I have to keep myself from going down that path. Uh, maybe someday, but for right now I have to stay focused on the task at hand. There's no way that will play well in the target demographics, so I have to put that in my pocket and carry on with another idea. I like the sound of a sister for Christmas, but I'm not sure how to make that about a relationship, so I'll scrap it. A Christmas melody implies music, but it's expensive to get actors who are also singers, so we'll scrap that too. The Christmas secret is vague and draws the viewer in. What's the secret? Well, the secret is that this movie already exists. It was made in 2014, and also 2000, but if we change it to a Christmas secret, then we're golden. So now we have to devise what this Christmas secret is. I'm thinking it has something to do with the man's past. Nothing serious. Uh, he can't be a child diddler or something like that. In fact, he's got to be great with kids. It has to be tame, yet something that the female character can overreact to from finding out. Okay, how about this? We build the premise of this movie such that the woman goes home to her small hometown uh, for Christmas after being broken up with in the big city. Uh, she meets an old classmate from high school with whom she falls in love with over the course of the movie. Let's also make him a single dad. You'll find out why in a minute. In the back nine of the film, we find out that he used to be married to one of the woman's arch enemies from high school, and she has to decide if she can look past that and be with him for who he is. Now, you might wonder why I picked high school classmates as how they knew each other in the past. I mean, who cares about what happened in high school? Hallmark does. Hallmark cares. High school was the most important time in your life, and you need to make that clear in your movie. This actually comes up quite frequently in these movies. 
Uh, Pat Godfrey moved back to town. What? Pat? From high school? He was my secret crush in high school. That's just proof that you've been jealous of me ever since back in high school. I feel like we never got a chance to talk back in high school. You had quite the crush on him in high school, and he's not married, right? Uh, do you remember, um, Max Cooper? From high school? Why are you blushing? I'm not. You're also probably wondering, what about Hanukkah? And it's a good question. About 3% of Americans are, in fact, Jewish. So it stands to reason that 3% of the movies I watched were about Hanukkah. However, Love Light's Hanukkah is not truly a Hanukkah movie. Rather, it's a Christmas movie that finally answered the question on so many people's minds. What is a Jew? And I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. Or a 9-foot Israeli. This is a lot of Christmas. You have a problem with that? Writing is the most critical part of this, so we'll certainly be taking the most time in this masterclass to cover it. We'll discuss the specifics of my demonstration movie here, but we'll also talk about some rules you want to follow during the construction of your Christmas world. Now there is one rule to writing a Christmas movie of this caliper that trumps all other rules. It is a crime to be single. It's so important that it bears repeating. It is a crime to be single. When you're with a member of the opposite sex, all of your secondary and tertiary characters must raise their eyebrows, smirk at one another, and behind the main character's back whisper to each other, wow, he's kind of cute. They must, at one point or another, approach the main character about the situation as a nosy parent would approach a child when they see them being nice to a member of the opposite sex, because nothing really gets the juices flowing like having mommy giving you a nudge and saying, I'd do him. That's another thing to think about when writing Christmas movies. Sex does not exist, but babies and pregnancies do. You must not show more physical contact than is absolutely necessary, unless the couple is already in an established relationship, and even then, they can only sneak off to try to be intimate, as in a merry little Christmas wedding. Now before we continue, we should address exactly why the lead male is single with a child. This leads us into a very important discussion about what you're allowed to write about in these films. Your gut reaction might be, his wife is dead. But you might be surprised to learn that his wife divorced him is an acceptable answer. Let me explain why. In general, you want to write with the values of 10, 20 years ago while using the vernacular of today. For example, divorce, interracial couples, and not overt homosexuality are acceptable, whereas transgender people might be a bit too much. Um, you have to use the current acceptable lexicon, though. For example, you can't say retarded, which, due to my poor timing, uh, was just considered bad taste after I left middle school. Divorce by that time was normalized, especially in middle America. I have the statistics. So it's okay, but remember, if the ex-wife comes back into the picture, she has to be more or less reasonable about the whole new girl situation. However, if it's just a ex-girlfriend slash boyfriend situation, then they don't have to be reasonable in the slightest. In fact, you may as well make them combative. One final comment on the matter. If the protagonist breaks up with someone in the course of the movie, then the breakup mustn't be hostile, and it must go down easy, so the main character can be with who they're meant to be, scot-free. This applies to most conflicts in the film you'll be writing. They must exist to keep your movie somewhat interesting, but they should resolve somewhat quickly and painlessly in a way that ensures the lead characters get everything they want in the end. Usually this is some kind of misunderstanding that can be resolved with just talking to the person, but remember to draw it out for at least 5-10 to 10 minutes so you can visibly see the main character battle with the misconception for a while, perhaps resorting to a Spongebob-esque Sunday ice cream bar scene as in a royal Christmas engagement. This was, by the way, the worst of the 32 films I saw, which was shocking because one of the films was made by David DiCutto and it ranked 17 out of 32. Kind of amazing. Now you might be compelled to include gay people in your movie. In fact, it might be absolutely necessary. Let's talk about the role of gay people in your movie. In general, there should only be one single straight man in your film, unless an ex-boyfriend is involved to add conflict. Your aim is to ensure that the lead female has no choice but to end up with the lead male. All other males must be gay or married. But what if you want to make a gay couple the focus of your movie? That's pushing it, but it has been done before. In one of the better movies I saw this month, uh, The Christmas Setup, uh, it featured a gay couple, Fran Drescher, saying the word schmuck. Those schmucks. Which is the worst curse I've heard in any Christmas movie. And a shocking amount of gay sexual innuendos. Can I give you a hand? 
Yeah, sure, I'll just grab the bottom. <laughs> it's not gonna fit. <laughs> Let's just turn it to the right, and... Uh, All right, go. Okay. slid right in. <laughs> Got some serious woodworking tools. <laughs> Could you grab those balls off the shelf? Sure. This movie pushed boundaries, so it makes sense that it was on Lifetime and not Hallmark. Hallmark has gotten to the point where they'll show gay people hitting it off and holding hands to show that they like each other, but it's too much to show them kiss or touch tips or whatever it is gay people do. <laughs> How would I know, Dad? Now there's only one example of lesbians in my 32 movie research I found, Christmas with the Darlings. Other than that, keep the homosexuals male. Now, every Christmas movie must have what I'm going to call a wise character, whom the main characters can go to for advice. Uh, if your cast has been white as snow up to this point, this is a great place to put token minorities. Everyone loves a wise black grandmother. Now, whenever there are kids involved, you must ensure that your main couple has the opportunity to perform what I'm calling pseudo-parenting. Pseudo-parenting is where a couple parents one or more children regardless of their relation to them. Uh, this is why I'm making the father single in my film. It gives the woman a chance to show her worth by joining with him to pseudo-parent his child. Now, do be sure to remember who your demographic is. Uh, we have to ensure that the movie makes them feel good beyond Christmas. Perhaps make the small Christmas-related town over-hospitable. I recommend using cross-country Christmas for reference here. Every town this couple happens through just so happens to be the nicest and most accommodating place on the planet where nothing bad could happen. Small towns always win, unless they're never compared to big towns, like in a Christmas waltz. Even though they're in New York, it does still feel a little suburby. Now finally, let's talk about the ending. You've built up several small conflicts at this point, and hopefully they've resolved without too much pain or fuss. Uh, now we have to figure out how to resolve the entire plot to give both characters everything they want. Does your main character work in New York as a party planner or an art gallery curator? Be sure to make them volunteer their services in the small town so that they're offered a job and thus stay with their interests, both love and work. Now, it doesn't matter if they've been ignoring their job back at home just to chase after some adventure. So you work here? Yep, I keep this place running while Mandy's distracted. And while we're at it, we should talk about the secondary characters' fates as well. Young or old, your main character's friends should always get together because, and I cannot stress this enough, it is a crime to be single, even for your secondary characters. So, in the end, your main character got the guy, the job, the mended family relations, and whatever else your story dictates. Now we're left with this nice, juicy script that you can pitch to networks across the globe. A real make or break moment for a Christmas movie is a pitch to the network executives. You have to effectively communicate the idea to them in as quick and concise a way as possible. It is crucial that they understand all the details about the film so they know exactly what they're funding. I'm on the phone here with two network executives from a popular television channel that airs these kinds of movies, and I'm about to pitch them my idea. Okay, shall we get started? Sure. Let's hear what you have. Okay, so the scene opens up in a big city, and this recently divorced white woman goes home for Christmas where she falls for someone from high school and- Great, we love it. Get it to us by October 12th. Excellent, that sounds wonderful, thank you. It really is that easy. I'm here in Chicago because the pandemic is disallowing travel to and from Canada, but you better believe that I'd be in Canada if I could be. And you should be too. You should be hiring Canadian actors and crew and anything you can to save on your budget. Uh, Canada subsidizes their film industry so aggressive that you'd be dumb not to shoot in Canada. To save even more money, consider making as many interactions as possible outside. And if it's not snowing, just fake it. Here's a pro tip for filming on location. Generally, there's no need for any kind of B-roll. It's usually easier and less expensive, especially in the case of big city Christmases, to find stock footage on the internet. Here's some examples I found after just a couple minutes of Googling. I'm gonna use these to build my opening montage. If you need an example of how to do this, you can look at any Christmas movie that's ever been made. If two people are about to kiss and there's more than 10 minutes left in your movie, be sure they're interrupted with a person coming into the room or perhaps a... Hello? 
works every time. If two people are having a conversation, go ahead and just make it over the shoulder or talking headshots. If it was good enough for the Star Wars prequel, it'll be good enough for this movie. For example, hey there, stranger. Oh my god, Jeb, hello. How are you? It's so good to see you. It's been so long. I haven't seen you since... Since high school, yeah. Yeah, what are you up to? I'm just uh, looking after the family farm. What are you up to? I'm in from New York visiting family. I can't believe you're still here. <laughs> yeah, it's 10 years later and I still think of you while I'm uh, distributing free literature. One final tip. A great opportunity for a closed set is just someone's house, especially the kitchen. Now, as I'm a reasonable person, I don't have my kitchen decorated up, but you want to make sure that your set is over-decorated. It just doesn't feel like home without it. We want the smell of gingerbread, pine, and cinnamon to reach through the viewer's screen and just slap them across the face. I mean, who knows? Maybe they're into it. Now that you have your footage, congratulations. That's the hard part done. Now it's time to edit your movie. This is Christina. She's a film editing student at the college at British Columbia. Uh, armed with Final Cut and her plucky Mac Mini, she's ready to slice and dice her first feature film. Christina is an excellent choice for this because she's very good at what she does, but she has a hard job ahead of her. She has to edit this movie into a cohesive story with a runtime of exactly one hour and 23 minutes while also placing appropriate commercial breaks. Or, if no appropriate commercial breaks exist, she'll just drop them wherever she wants. Christina is also going to make liberal use of montages. A good rule of thumb is if several people are doing something boring, put it to some Christmas music. Uh, this is usually to gloss over a family tradition of some kind so we can get the gist of it without having to engage in another family's trivialities. Speaking of, I'm going to go look for some music. For this, I'm going to look for tracks that sound reminiscent of classic Christmas artists like Michael Buble, but aren't Michael Buble because that's expensive. For example, Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh O'er the hills we go laughing all the way Bells on bobtails ring making spirits bright What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh song tonight Oh jingle bells jingle bells jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. I like the way this guy sounds. Uh, do make sure you reify all of the music so people know what to think. Uh, I recommend watching Tanta Cruel's Autosad video on this. Uh, I put a link in the description. But just remember that pizzicato means stupid and this. And here comes Kiera. Hey! My sister's getting married! <laughs> you get the idea. Now as soon as you press the send button on your final render, start cranking out a sequel. It's better to have one ready than not to have one at all. In my experience, movies in established universes were far better than those that weren't. Now, this could be a controversial opinion since there isn't the same type of romantic struggle that makes fresh one-off movies so delicious. But I contend that the struggle is usually more relatable and more relationship testing and thus more interesting when it involves a sequel. It also means that the prior movies were good enough to warrant a sequel, so that's a good sign that you're onto something. Now, if you really want to pull a Marvel, feel free to expand your cinematic universe. Christmas and Evergreen and Merry Little Christmas have been doing it for years, and it's worked so far. I hope by now you've learned how to make a Christmas movie for the masses. It may not be the most glamorous job in the world, but it is a job. It's an acting credit. It's a directing credit. It's a writing credit. In the cutthroat world of filmmaking, a resume matters, even the ones littered with a few low-budget Christmas movies. The fact that you're creating something should be enough. It may not be appreciated by a few loud voices, but I guarantee you that there is a silent majority that curls up each night at 8-7 Central to watch your newest creation. Think of it as comfort food. 
It might be fun to meme about macaroni and cheese, but gosh darn it, it makes you feel good. It's comfortable. If I wanted to watch something that challenged me, there are millions of other movies I could pick. But tonight, right now, I just want to curl up on the couch and watch the great Christmas adventure or whatever. The point is, is that it's easy to make fun of Hallmark Christmas movies. The one thing I've learned from this experience is that while they do share common tropes, rules, styles, they weren't as strictly held to a mold as I expected. Some of them deviated quite radically, and believe it or not, some of them I rather enjoyed. The rules set forth in this masterclass might be true today, but who knows? Maybe you can make the next Squid Game of Hallmark Christmas movies. Or maybe they won't let you. Either way, you're still getting paid. because nothing really gets the juices flowing like having mommy give you a nudge and say, I'd do him. <laughs> <laughs>